Hey survivors, it's likely been a while since you've last heard my voice. My name is Nick, and I'm the lead developer of Dead Matter. Saying that there has been a lot of change brought to Dead Matter over the last few years is a bit of an understatement. This vlog aims to clarify the current situation with the project, what we've been up to over the last few months, and the direction we're going to be heading towards in the future. All of the footage in this vlog is representative of what is currently available in our nightly build. It's a sample of what's on the plate for the next closed alpha update. We also recently refactored all of the materials in the game to use a small set of masters. This is so we could set up virtual texturing as well as additional weather effect. We should talk about the zombies that you're seeing on screen, because there are quite a few of them. Back in 2018, we established that one of the most important things to Dead Matter is that Dead Matter is a zombie game. It's not a survival game, it's a zombie survival game. What you're looking at right now is Pitbull AI. Pitbull was written entirely in-house. We wanted to build a total solution for zombies in our game from the ground up. This wasn't our first time around the block trying to pull something like this off though we never really showed any of that publicly because it honestly never really went anywhere. What you're seeing on screen right now is the flocking behavior for the AI. Zombies in Dead Matter will naturally form hordes and they'll naturally disband them. There are different factors that feed into what agents decide to form a horde, but generally they have a varied temperament and you should expect to see them moving in groups around the map. This next clip is just basically a bit of a combat demo. Unfortunately, UE 5.2 actually ended up blocking me from being able to show this in the proper vlog, hence why I'm just using an older clip to demonstrate that the idea is there and it generally works. Any glitches and bugs that you're seeing related to the position of the ragdoll is because I was actually working on the networking module of Pitbull at the time that I recorded that video. If you're looking really close, those aren't ants, they're zombies. The session that I recorded this in had 2,751 zombies to be exact. This is just for one town, and the server is capable of simulating a lot more. This is without any sort of system to enable or disable simulation, which means we have a lot of room for optimization. We are extremely excited for the system. Peyton, aka Dogtooth CG, is excited to be bringing us a proper replacement to the prior gore system. Get your guns ready and plan accordingly. Grant polished up the hands material because quite frankly, the last iterations really didn't look that great. For those of you that are out of the loop since we rewrote the game shortly after the closed alpha launch, we actually ended up going in a bit of a different direction for the player character and the camera and the controls. We use a sort of quote unquote diet true first person. It's off by default, but it's also on in most of the footage that you're seeing. It's really subtle, and it allows us to really easily coordinate the camera with the third-person mesh representation. There's a few bugs here and there, especially when the camera doesn't align exactly with where the mesh is expecting it to be, but it feels a lot nicer. You might have noticed that I just walked up to that car, got inside, and drove away. This is all thanks to the new vehicle system that Sasha has been putting together. They use chaos physics and serve as a stable foundation for our vehicles moving forward. Cody, one of our coders, implemented a new harvesting system for the game. This means that bushes and even trees can now be interacted with. You can pick grapes and berries from bushes, or you can get an axe out and start chopping some trees down. Using an axe to deal damage to the logs will result in firewood spawning. There's still a few more particles and a bit more polish to go, but overall, the system works, and we're excited to bring it to the next patch. The next system that we're talking about is actually something that was developed almost two years ago. We did show it off in a few of the blog posts that we were doing recently. However, in 2022, the feature was cut entirely. Braden, aka Nomad, has been hard at work. In fact, he's created multiple NPCs that you can interact with in the world. Not only that, you can actually do jobs for them. Jobs can also be triggered from random encounters in the world, such as this drone. Jobs can also have branching storylines, which is something that we're really excited for. Granted, these probably won't feel like a million dollars until they're properly voice acted, but we do feel that they give our players a lot more to do in the world than the current version of the game offers. 
Next up, we have a tour of the entire map. I'm going to cover each individual region of our world. Currently, we have three primary regions in our world. The regions are Dead Man's Flat, Exshaw, and CB. There is also a fourth region that is currently in production right now. That region is Canmore. Currently, what you're looking at is the CB region of the map. It's characterized by its large hydroelectric dam. CB also features a summer camp, a small rural region, campgrounds, as well as a quarry. There's honestly too much to actually show here in one vlog, so we highly encourage that people download 0.10 and give the area a tour for themselves. If you are currently not a backer of the project, well, there's no Indiegogo link to go to anymore. Since we are nearing the end of the closed alpha for Dead Matter, if you do not already have access to it, we may actually consider lending you a key. Keep in mind that we have limited quantities, and we are generally prioritizing people that have made themselves visible in the community. Next up on the map tour, we have the one and the only Dead Man's Flat. Oddly enough, a lot of people actually think that we renamed the town that this is based off of, but no. Dead Man's Flats is an actual town in Alberta near Canmore and near Extra. It's actually right in between the two. While all of the town names in Dead Matter are up for grabs by backers that paid for them, the region will still be referred to as Dead Man's Flats for realism purposes. The DMF region also includes Pasco Lake. This part of the map has plenty of hiking trails for you to follow as a player. There's also a few other locations in the area, such as this massive timber yard, as well as the Mountain Gate Resort. One of the first few additions that we made to Dead Men's Flats in the original version of the game. Another blast from the past is that there are a few crashed military helicopters in the area. The next area on the map tour is Extra, known famously in Alberta for its massive concrete plant. If you're from the region, and if you've ever driven to Banff, then you've actually likely seen one of the buildings that I'm about to show off in real life. However, that depends on whether or not you've taken Highway 1 or Highway 1A, both of which are represented in Dead Matter. If you've driven on 1A, then you might actually recognize this plant with all the green windows on it. This plant is a lot lesser known, but it is a lot prettier in our opinion. Ken and Patrick both did an excellent job on these locations, I personally cannot wait to hunt down players in my own game at these locations. I guess if you've ever really wanted to kill me, you'll finally get your chance. Good luck though, you'll need it. And this is the plant that I was referring to earlier. If you've driven to Banff, you've definitely seen this in real life. Speaking of Banff and other towns that are near Banff, the last place that I'll be taking you to on the map tour will be Canmore. However, this Part of Canmore isn't actually a part of Canmore proper, which is actually going to be the game's first small-sized city. No, these are actually a suburb that exists outside of Canmore. Ken, Patrick, and Dusty have done a fantastic job on this part of the map. Ken and Patrick have been working on a lot of the exteriors. Ken has been working on blocking out all of the different buildings. Dusty has been primarily focusing on environment art to make sure that the level designers can work ahead of the art team. This allows us to get a feel for the region as well as allowing the level design team to work ahead of the art team. This is crucial because level design often involves far more iterations than environment art will. Not only that, we are actually creating buildings because we need them, rather than the other way around where we were creating buildings and then finding a use for them on the map. While this is much more of an industry standard approach, and we're pretty much anything but industry standard at this point, we found that this is an approach that works really well as seen by the school that Dusty has been working on, originally created as a blockout by Ken, and then passed over to Dusty for completion. There's still a bit of work that needs to be done to make sure that it fits the setting, but overall, this is actually one of the largest, if not the largest building in the game right now. It also wouldn't have been possible without our pipeline changes. We hope you're as excited as we are for the direction that the game will be going in. Moving forward, we decided to go down a lot more of a realistic simulator style direction. Does that mean that we're not a game? No, not necessarily. Does this mean that we are deviating from the original vision of the game? No, we feel that this actually aligns us more closely to the original vision of the game. Realistic, simulation, but also we want to remain realistic as playable, which is a key element for us. 
Lastly, I really wanted to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for tagging along for the journey. Most of us on the team were about 18-19 years old when we originally started and committed to this project. While there have been some peaks and valleys on the way to getting Dead Matter onto Steam, we are incredibly grateful to have the amount of support from the community. It really means a lot to us. Once again, thank you guys so much. We really, really appreciate it. If you're interested in helping the project in any sort of way, or if you're interested, this is normally where I would show the Indiegogo scroller, but since we don't really have an Indiegogo page anymore, if you want to support us, wishlist us on Steam. Sharing the video also helps us tremendously. Until next time, stay safe, survivors.